Alleluia. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. I'm Pastor Matthew Barrasso of Redeemer Evangelical Lutheran Church in Parkton, Maryland. What follows is our worship service for what we are calling Easter Vigil 2. It is Sunday, April 19th, 2020. If you'd like more information on what this Easter Vigil season is, you can go to our website, www.redeemerparkton.org, and follow the links on the page. The order of service this morning is Matins, and so if you have a hymnal, please go ahead and get it and follow along and participate as you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hand. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. O come, let us worship him. Arise, O God, defend your cause. Remember how the foolish scoff at you all the day. How long, O God, is the foe to scoff, is the enemy to revile your name forever? Why do you hold back your hand, your right hand? Take it from the fold of your garment and destroy them. Yet God, my King, is from of old, working salvation in the midst of the earth. You divided the sea by your might. You broke the heads of the sea monsters on the waters. You crushed the heads of the Leviathan and you gave him as food for the creatures of the wilderness. You split open springs and brooks. You dried up ever-flowing streams. Yours is the day, yours also the night. You have established the heavenly lights and the sun. You have fixed all the boundaries of the earth. You have made summer and winter. Arise, O God, defend your cause. Remember how the foolish scoff at you all the day. A reading from Lamentations. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. Let him sit alone in silence when it is laid on him. Let him put his mouth in the dust. There may yet be hope. Let him give his cheek to the one who strikes, and let him be filled with insults. For the Lord will not cast off forever, but, though he cause grief, he will have compassion, according to the abundance of his steadfast love, for he does not willingly afflict or grieve the children of men. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. A reading of Psalm 131. O Lord, my heart is not lifted up, 
My eyes are not raised too high. I do not occupy myself with things too great and too marvelous for me, but I have calmed and quieted my soul, like a weaned child with its mother, like a weaned child is my soul within me. O Israel, hope in the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified about God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order. Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, after destroying every rule and every authority and power, for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when it says all things are put in subjection, it is plain that he is expected, accepted who put all things in subject, subjection under him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to him who put all things in subjection under him, that God may be all in all. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. A reading from Matthew. While they were going, behold, some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priests all that had taken place. And when they had assembled with the elders and taken counsel, they gave a sufficient sum of money to the soldiers and said, Tell people, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. And if this comes to the governor's ears, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So they took the money and did as they were directed. And this story has been spread among the Jews to this day. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, to the end of the age. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim his salvation from day to day. Give to the Lord all glory and strength. Give him the honor due his name. Alleluia. Alleluia. Now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that sleep. Give to the Lord all glory and strength. Give him the honor due his name. Alleluia. Alleluia. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Give to the Lord all glory and strength. Give him the honor due his name. Alleluia. Alleluia. The grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. 
A friend shared a blog with me the other day, and for the most part, I found it helpful as it focused on fasting from communion during this pandemic. There was one part of it, though, that I really struggled with. The author suggested that the fast was imposed by God. I had to do a bit of a double take when I read that just to make sure I read it right. Now, he isn't the first pastor I've come across to make that kind of suggestion, that God is the one imposing this whole thing. Every time I hear it, though, I think to myself, you can't say that, even if it's true. Why? Not because of some notion that God is love and and he would never unleash his anger. Look at the flood. God got so upset with humanity that he drowned all but eight people. So it is possible. But unlike the flood narrative, we don't have a text that says this pandemic is God unleashing his anger. For that reason alone, it is enough to stop suggesting it. To do otherwise is to peer into the hidden God. Now, what I mean by that is God can, and certainly does, act in ways we will never understand or be able to see. With Isaiah, we confess, truly you are a God who hides himself. This is what I mean when I say the hidden God. The God who acts behind the scenes, who does things, but doesn't tell us that he is doing them or why. So, while I can say that the flood was pouring out his anger, I cannot say this pandemic is. With the flood, I have a text. It has been revealed. With this pandemic, I don't. Now, it may be true, but unless something has been revealed, we do well not to suggest we know for sure that something is or isn't true. So instead on dwelling on the hidden God, the God who may or may not be up to something, Lutherans flee to the revealed God, to the God revealed in the text of Scripture, to the God revealed in Jesus Christ. Now, I know that I have departed from a traditional three-year or one-year lectionary for the time being, but one thing my selection of texts for today shares with those other lectionaries is the text from Lamentations. Now, I don't mean that other ones pick that text for today. I mean that the only text they use from Lamentations is the text we heard earlier. The book of Lamentations is written by Jeremiah, and in the first couple of chapters of the book, really up until our text today, there are a series of laments of the people of God crying out and describing the suffering God has inflicted upon them. The text says it, so I can too. What is revealed in this text is that Judah is handed over, Jerusalem is overcome, because God has found his people lacking in faithfulness, and so he is pouring out his wrath. This is the exile, when God led his people into captivity. The northern kingdom falls first, then the southern kingdom, and God's people suffer because he was angry. And I know talking about God this way makes us feel uncomfortable. We don't like to admit that there are things God does that seem to contradict what he says about himself or what he does in sending his son. This is why, if we don't have a text, we shouldn't say it. But here, like the flood, we do have one. And the suffering described in the book of Lamentations, is not a happy thing. It doesn't give us a warm and fuzzy feeling. Then comes our text, with words that do make us feel good, that likely made the first hearers of our text feel good, too. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. What a turn. In the words leading up to this, we hear of how God is chastising his people because of their unfaithfulness. And then we hear that God's faithfulness is great. That his love and mercies never end, but are new every morning. 
because this is true about God, one can wait quietly for him and his salvation because they know it is coming. As the end of the text says, though he cause grief, he will have compassion. The thing to learn here is that grief and pain and suffering might be caused by God. You cannot say they are or aren't because you don't have a text saying they are or aren't. But you can trust in the fact that beyond the grief, the pain and suffering, those things come to an end. That even if it is God inflicting it, it does not last. No, the thing that never ceases is the steadfast love of the Lord. His mercies never end. They are new every morning. God's faithfulness is great. So great, in fact, that there was one who was who put his mouth in the dirt, in the dust, as our text says, who gave his cheek to the one who struck, who hung alone in silence and bore the yoke of the world, Jesus the Christ. He is the reason there may yet be hope. Life is hard across the world right now. People are sick and dying. People are broken financially, emotionally, spiritually. There is no shortage of heartbreak. And the reality is, there is never a shortage. It is amplified right now on a global scale, but it is always there. People are always sick and dying. People are always broken financially, emotionally, and spiritually. We just aren't always so acutely aware of it. This is life in the world after the fall. And some like to blame God. Some like to get him off the hook. Me? I like to leave him out of that side of things, unless I have a text to tell me otherwise. Why? Because in one sense, it doesn't matter if God is the cause or not, if man is the cause or not, if Satan is the cause or not. If there is one thing you hear from me today, let it be this. We can't be sure of what caused the coronavirus. But we can be sure that God is faithful to his promise. His mercies are new every morning. In one sense, it does not matter what causes the brokenness in our lives. Because even in the midst of pain and suffering, there may yet be hope. There may yet be hope because Christ died on a Friday and rose on a Sunday. There may yet be hope because just as by one man came death, so too by one man came a resurrection from the dead. There may yet be hope because all authority in heaven and on earth was given to him and he promised to be with us to the end of the age. There may yet be hope because God has revealed to us who he is in Christ. He has revealed his heart for you. He has revealed that your suffering, brokenness, and pain, they will come to an end. But that doesn't mean all things will come to an end. There may yet be hope, because the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Amen. Right.
us by day and night. All things are governed by His might. We all believe in Jesus Christ. of every grace and blessing, born of Mary, virgin mother, by the power of the Spirit, word made flesh of elder brother, that the lost might life inherit, was crucified Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God of mercy, you have told us that your steadfast love never ceases and that you are good to those who wait on you. Grant us the patience to wait for you in hope and confidence that you will continue to shower us with your steadfast love, mercy, and compassion. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Look mercifully, O Lord, we implore you, on the affliction of your people. Let not our sin destroy us, nor hopelessness overwhelm us but let your boundless mercy save us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.